Hello, I'd like to buy this modern video game, please. That will be $70, please. Do you mean 70 Canadian dollars? What country are we in right now? America? Is that a question? America. Then no, not Canadian dollars. American dollars. But games used to be $60. Yeah, I used to have dreams. Things change, idiot. But... Do you want the game or not? Uh... Yeah... That'll be $80. I thought you said 70 I forgot to include the idiot tax. Hey there, friends. It's Just the Gems. I'm Brandon. I don't know if you've heard, but a lot of video games are $70 now. And many, many people have feelings about that. Part of me kind of wishes that I had a strong reaction to it. Lord knows I could use more subscribers on my channel and maybe some good old fashioned ranting would bring them in. But honestly, I don't know. I just can't muster the energy to get upset about it. I'm old enough to remember when Chrono Trigger came out in 1995 for $80 or like 150 ish in today's money. So $70 seems fine. I don't know, help me out here, people. I'm definitely able to be sympathetic to people who want to buy games, but maybe have a more limited budget. In that sense, yeah, a basically 20% price increase on all video games is not something that's very easy to swallow. It doesn't help either that wages have basically been stagnant ever since Reagan fixed capitalism by, let me check my notes, by giving all my money to rich people. Huh. An across-the-board price increase for all AAA games is a bad idea in general, though. And look, I can say that as someone who's fortunate enough not to have a super strict gaming budget. The idea seems to be that all AAA games are created equal. They are not. That's not to say that every AAA game doesn't have value. All AAA games have value equal to, and often greater than, the amount of effort put into them by the developers. But as gamers, we're purchasing an experience. If the experience that I'm buying is rich and deep and involving, then I'm willing to pony up for it. See the aforementioned $150 Chrono Trigger as an example. Okay, I guess technically my mom bought that for me as just a kid, but you know what I mean. But not every game is a Chrono Trigger or a Last of Us or a Final Fantasy, right? Sometimes you're a Tecmo Secret of the Stars, or an Army of Two, or a Mega Dimension Neptunia. And that's fine, actually, that's good. There need to be a variety of games to cater to everyone's unique tastes. There are people out there for whom Mega Dimension Neptunia is their favorite video game series, and I say more power to them. But I also would think if they're being really honest with themselves, they know that Mega Dimension Neptunia does not have the same level of quality or polish that a series like, say, Final Fantasy does. And that's both in terms of production value and cultural cachet. Speaking of cultural cachet, that's where demand comes into play as a factor for determining what the price of a game should be. A popular long running series of games can sell for more than something that is brand new, untested, something that I'm unsure of, right? The pedigree of Final Fantasy 16 fills me with confidence. Now, something like Loop 8, Summer of Gods, I have no idea who's making that game. So I'm a little more wary to put my $70 down. I mean, I'm still doing it. I pre-ordered it, but you know what I mean? I'm a little more nervous about it. It might not be great. And look, none of that is to say that any game that has sold well or is popular should always be $70 or more. Not at all. I'm just saying if you're a publisher trying to figure out how much you should charge for your upcoming game, you have to take those sorts of things into consideration. Maybe your new Neptunia game is $40 brand new. A lower price might bring in more curious fans, thereby growing the fan base and creating more opportunities for growth in the future. See, I feel like I'm picking on Neptunia. I'm not trying to. I'm, it's fine. I'm sure that it's fine. I have a few of them. I will get around to them eventually. I'm... 
I'm sure they're fine. Publishers don't want to go through that whole rigmarole of determining the specific price point to launch every new game at. They like it simple. Brand new AAA game, $70. Discount it down to 50 in two weeks, and then three weeks after that, let them sell it for $12.50 in the bargain bin. And see, that whole discounting thing is evidence of the problem. A game gets a giant discount a couple of months after launch, chances are that game wasn't selling very well. At least not well according to the publisher's unrealistic expectations for how well it should sell. Cough, Square Enix, cough, Tomb Raider, cough. <clears throat> Having variable pricing for AAA titles means that retailers won't have to discount games so often. You know why Nintendo games never go on sale? Because they're the right price. Nintendo understands the value of the games they make. Other publishers really need to get in touch with reality and stop assuming that just because Babylon's Fall cost you a lot of money to make doesn't mean that it is worth $70. It's actually worth $0 because stores apparently had to destroy their copies of the game because Square Enix didn't want them back. R.I.P. Babylon's Fall. Anyway, rant over. It's not really a rant. Just my thoughts, I guess. Sometimes I have thoughts and I want to share them. Is that okay? I hope so. I did it. I'm sure there's some aspects of this that I'm not considering, so let me know what I'm missing down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts in general. I would love to engage with you there. If you liked this video, maybe consider clicking the like button. And if you're not subscribed and you want to see more from little old me, maybe click subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, bye.